joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Sorrell. Happy 4th of July. We're excited to say that 4th of July is back. We are here at the annual event that's sponsored by the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. And of course, everyone in the community is invited, including our local leaders. So let's take a look at all of the action. Oh, this is obviously symbolic in our nation in general, but uh, particularly notable this year, given that we're coming off the hills of the pandemic. And for our city, this is really the first sort of milestone event we've had with all the people here in the community coming together uh, on one day for one event. And then we have a series of events coming up. So this is, a, this is really a great day uh, to celebrate our nation's history and to celebrate ourselves here in the city of Ranch Palos Verdes. What do you think you missed the most not having this last year? Oh, good question. Uh, the people, clearly. Uh, you know, it's part of the city council and part of the joy of city council is getting to collaborate with people and that's been more limited, although we found new creative ways to do that. But I am looking forward to having more people in the room with us and uh, being able to interact with people more as things continue to reopen. It's interesting, we always talk about how really special this community is and I've talked to so many people earlier in the week they're like oh I can't wait to go to 4th of July what is it about this city that makes the community so close oh I, well I think it's uh, we as a city uh, what's so special about us is as I was talking about is the people I mean it is coming together being together um, not every community I think has that real sense of community and camaraderie and helping each other. You just think back to the last year in the pandemic again, and I can think of so many examples where uh, students were helping seniors, senior, seniors were helping families around them, and, and vice versa. And so that, that sense of we're in it together and we're here to look out for one another is what makes us and our PP so special. I am so excited about the fact that we can actually have this event because of course last year it was canceled and I've been coming here since way before I was even on the council the first time. I have loved this event. It's so great when the community can get together. It's, it's for kids, it's for adults, it's for grannies. You know, everybody comes out to celebrate. And I think especially this year, we're celebrating the independence of our country and freedom and liberty. But this year is very special. It's a different kind of freedom. And I think we're all feeling it, that we can get outside, that we can see people we haven't seen, that we can see faces, you know. Some people are still wearing masks and that's fine, but you're free to, to come without a mask and to celebrate. And I can already see kids are coming and teenagers and we're gonna have music. And it's just a wonderful event this year. And our staff has just done an excellent job of pulling it all together because we really didn't know, even the 1st of June, what the restrictions might be and if we could have it, if we couldn't, and what it would be like. And then after the 15th, you know, they found out, okay, we can do this. We can have it outside. And here we are. I, I always see people and friends that I haven't seen for such a long time when I come here. And also, I make new friends. You know, if you sit at a table and you've got extra chairs, somebody's wanna, gonna wanna come and sit down and, and you talk to them and their kids. And it's just a feeling of community. And I think that's what I miss the most. Okay, it wouldn't be 4th of July without Councilman Dida here with the hat. This is, you have become a signature here at this event. Happy 4th of July. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, I, I am a signature, and, and I don't know if you realize it, but the council passed a resolution. I'm not allowed to come without my hat. Well, yeah, <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to not be here at all. Of course, you have to be here. You have to have the hat. Because of the year that we've been through, talk about how important it is this year to have this celebration that, like you said, you've been to every one of them, and how important it is this year especially. Well, you know, with the pandemic, we missed one year. And I got to give staff real credit because what they did in two weeks, it's amazing. And then the very, very gratifying thing, not only are our PV people here, 
put it, the message got out to our local communities and they're here. So I think this is a signature event for Rancho Palos Verdes. Uh, it's going to continue as far as I'm concerned forever. Okay. And uh, we're going to just, just do it and, and have a great time celebrating the fourth. Well, it is so cool to see everybody out here. I mean, this is early. We have all the families, the kids out. Um, they're on the uh, bounce houses. This is so cool that folks are out. Um, you know, we're almost out of the pandemic. Some of our friends and family still haven't been vaccinated, but we're still, we're getting there. I think in RPV, we're close to 75% of our residents being vaccinated. Um, that's a great number, but we need to get to 100. Uh, but the fact that most of us are vaccinated and that we're able to come out and have an event like this and get the community back together and get the community open is so tremendous. It is so fun to see everybody out for a change. What did you miss the most not being here last Last year, do you think? I just miss seeing people, seeing the families out having fun, having folks here at City Hall, being able to come together as a community and get out and enjoy the beautiful uh, uh, facility that is RPV. Last year was tough for everyone. Um, we all hunkered down and now we get a chance to come back out and celebrate America's birthday and uh, you know for me and my family and for all my friends this is amazing. What do you miss the most about not having this event? Um, you know first of all I, I, I miss of course seeing everyone and uh, you know but I also thought about the United States and how resilient we are as people. Um, it makes you reflect on it so um, you know, I miss seeing the people, but in the same sense, I had a great sense of pride in, in how great our country is. Uh, well, happy July 4th to you and to everybody out there. Um, a, as you know, we have been doing this as long as, pretty much as, as the city's been incorporated. And last year, um, we had to uh, cancel it. And that was the first time ever. And so to be able to do it again this year, to start it up again, it's just a sign of where we are. And, and it's, it's an opportunity to reach out to everybody and, and express our appreciation and show something to the public and, and bring people together and celebrate the birth of our nation. You, know, you last year were involved with so many charitable events with the fire department, the police department, all of our residents, and you really saw everybody coming out to pull together. Now we see them enjoying themselves out here. What is that like for you? You know, uh, Last year, uh, amidst all that we were going through, it was it was so moving for me um, to actually see the resiliency in, in our community and everyone coming together and, and navigating through uh, this this crisis. And I was so impressed and so proud of everybody and and to be able to reach out and and to our our first responders and our uh, essential workers and give something back to them that was very important to the city and 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 the council individual council members went accompanied me with the deliveries and I know you covered a lot of that and so so that that has left an indelible mark on, on my um, um, in, in my mind and and to bring people now together where we we were we were all separated and distanced and to bring people together today and seeing people out there it, it just makes you feel really good it's just a special feeling inside so i'm really happy to be here and and to see everyone out today i was so incredibly proud of your staff that really pulled this together on the on the fly because you know, before june 15th we didn't know where we could be in masks or no masks and lo and behold they did it oh absolutely it's funny that you asked me that question because as i pulled up and i saw everything Set up. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this was all uh, accomplished in just a matter of a few weeks. And I ended up texting um, a friend of mine saying, I'm so proud of, of the staff that put all of this together. It's so impressive. So yes, very, very proud of everybody. Everyone, Corey, Dan, and his entire team. Um, and you've got staff here working at the table that came out on their day off on a holiday to be here to, um, to communicate and to reach out to uh, the community and be that um, that face behind City Hall. So I'm very proud, very proud. And I'm very proud to be here and very excited to be here sitting behind this table and handing out information and talking and interacting with the public. Well, this is an annual event here. I know this is your first one because we didn't have it last year. What do you think it means for the community to be able to be together again here? 
It's really important. Um, we have been trying to do things and activities for our, our, our residents for quite some time and being able to do that today on a special day um, as we reopen you know our state, reopen our community and have a festival such as you know today's 4th of July event. It's really important and I think they were ready and they've been they've been kind of hungry for it and we're really happy to be able to do this for them and it's um, it's fun. It's exciting for them to be able to come out and, and, and gather as well. Also, you all from the city of RPV have worked so hard to put this together this year. Just talk a little bit about what goes into an event like this and tell us what you're doing here at the RPV booth today. So, it's been a progress, you know, to get from where we started off being able to get approval to even host an event. So, we started planning this months ago. Well, months ago, we weren't open yet. And we had to get approval by the county just to make sure that we were able to host this event. As things started to open up in June, we were able to um, add additional activities. So we had to make sure we had in place individuals that were willing to come out here, like food trucks, uh, volunteers, staff. Um, we have the Symphonic here today. Uh, I mean, it just it's a lot of work, a lot of behind the scenes that has to happen to be able to put this together. And for us here at the city, we wanted to have our own booth, and that's kind of what we have here today. We had we're at the public safety booth. And here you have a little bit about uh, emergency preparedness for our community. Um, we have one of the most important things here that our um, emergency preparedness committee put together is the low cost ways to fire um, hard in your home. Really, really important for us to get our community prepared for an emergency. Uh, we are hosting our upcoming um, August 4, 2021, first year anniversary, having the Sakura City Sister City. Uh, we also have um, our fire department sent over a lot of really nice masks for children, even though um, they're not here today, but they're definitely providing us information to have our community become more aware of um, fire safety and such in our community. Um, and also important, we have, um, or really trying to share the information on our aging and disability resource connection. We really want to get out to our community that are aging, but also those that are disabled. So uh, we're really trying to promote this program. It's in the uh, beginning stages, so we're hoping to kind of really evolve and, and get out there and help more of our community members. We also have the Coyote um, plan. So we have a lot of different activities that are kind of being discussed here. We're also promoting our download, our My RPV app. Uh, we have Lucas here who's doing an interactive how to utilize your mobile app and download. So a lot of fun stuff here, but we have other booths that are definitely sharing more um, of our PV activities. So we, you guys are going to be very busy today. We are very busy today, but we're excited to be here, and it's the first time we get to be out here for a really long time. Megan, just tell us a little bit about preparing to sing the national anthem. It's not an easy song. It's actually one of my favorites to do. <laughs> I love singing the national anthem. So it's a song that usually when I warm up for gigs or other shows for my own stuff, I kind of use the song to warm up my voice to make sure that I'm ready to go. Um, but gets lots of sleep, lots of water. I usually steam my voice. No alcohol a few days before a gig. You know, it's a muscle. I got to treat it, treat it like an athlete. So. How important is it to be able to sing that song on the 4th of July of all day? Oh man, it makes me very proud. I love my country and I'm happy that I get to sing happy birthday to it in a way. So it's nice. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. I think uh, we've been cooped up for a year. It's uh, a year that we'll never be able to take back and uh, we learned a lot and it's been an interesting year and it's nice to uh, be able to move forward and uh, try and get back to normal. It's interesting because we've talked to so many people in the community that, that they want to be safe, they want to stay safe. Some people still have masks on but everybody's pretty much social distancing and they just want to have the opportunity to be out again. Talk about that. Well, I mean, it's it's like I said, it's uh, we've been cooped up. Uh, we're trying to move forward, and uh, you know, it'll be nice. It's you know, some people are getting vaccinated, some aren't, and that's that's a, a controversial topic in itself. Um, and I'm just trying to 
show respect for everybody, and I think I, I hope that everybody in our society can do the same for one another. Just just be a little respectful of others, and uh, you know, keep our personal preferences to ourselves. And, and if we're if we're all respectful, uh, we can all get along together and, and move forward. It's so wonderful to see you out here on Fourth of July. How much does it mean to you to be here, especially this Fourth? It is so wonderful. I gotta tell you, I. You know, a year ago, I thought, what are we ever going to do? Where are we going to be? When can we, in turn, come back to some type of normalcy? You know, I just couldn't believe it. And then, as we got closer, I got worried and concerned. You know, are we all going to jump out too soon, and then we're going to be in a big problem and have to be closed down again? So I am just thrilled. And I'm just thrilled to see people here, and they're going to be enjoying the concert and everything. So have a great day. Good to see you. Okay, Sue, you're also both representing the Rotary Club here. Tell us a little bit about that. Cal's Verde's Sunset has been doing this for quite a number of years, serving the beer and wine at the booth, and um, it's a nighttime club. Uh, they meet at Creme de la Crepe, and uh, it's just a very good club, and we're happy to be here again this year. Happy, happy 4th, 4th of July. July! Enjoy, celebrate, and have great fun. This is actually my first year. They invited me, and I'm so excited. I want you to know, first of all, that we cannot have a celebration, I'm sorry, without kettle corn. So true. That is so true. It's so nostalgic. It's so American. Isn't it? And, oh, yes. You have three different kinds of kettle corn. Tell us about that. Okay, well, actually, we do over 55 gourmet flavors. We have, today we brought in the sweet kettle corn, the caramel, and a classic plain popcorn. Which, do, which is the favorite that people like? Oh, that's such a toss-up. It is really hard because even today, people are having a hard time choosing between the sweet and the caramel. You know what you do? You just say, pick one of each. Get both. Get both, get both. And it would have been worse if we would have brought our signature flavor in, which is caramel covered with cheddar cheese, which is our Windy City mix. That one is my personal favorite. Yes. I think because that's just too many choices. Yes. Carlos and I can't get through the day without the kettle. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -mm. Oh, no. Oh, my, I, I, it's time for me to go home now because I, I got the kettle corn. Mayor, you know that two of your fellow council members will be doing a pie eating contest today. So, um, who do you have money on? Oh, geez, I, I could not pick out of my two friends. Um, you know, John has has a bit of the edge right now because he did come out victorious in last year's event. He's done this prior years. He's done this before. He's got a little bit of experience. He does. Experience matters. But Dave has been training hard, as I understand it. So he is ready. We are going to see quite the competition today between. Council Member Crookshank, Mayor Pro Tem Bradley. I I'm really excited to see it, and I'm glad that I'm not having to do it. <laughs> you know, two of the um, fellow city councilmen will be participating in a very serious pie eating contest, and we have to ask you, um, who do you think has the edge today? You know, it's, it's sunny outside. It's not too hot. It's a little cold. You know, well, I'm going to go with um, Mayor Pro Tem Bradley and see what happens. Um, and I think it's, I think today's his day. I was one of the few that was able to witness um, the, the pie eating contest last year, and I actually arrived at the very end of it, and I was, I was, I, I was taken back from what I saw, and I will leave it at that. Pie is very American, so we're just following in suit. A absolutely, absolutely, I support it, and, and I'm all for it. I'm just afraid of what I may see, <laughs> but but I, I'm rooting for both my council members. I did hear about that. As a matter of fact, I, I think they're trying to get some revenge from last year. I think they are. So, uh, who do you have your money on? Ooh, that's a tough one. I don't know. Um, I didn't get the witness last year's, and so I really don't have any. I, I don't have a scattering report to go off of. So I, I you know, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm gonna, re I'm gonna reserve my comments at this point. I, I'm, in, I'm interested to watch it though. It'll be entertaining. I'd have to go with John. <laughs> be a fun one you know that oh yes I remember previous pie eating contests and fortunately I never uh, participated he's somewhat of a pro I think I think so too 
I think he's a sleeper. You know, Dave thinks he's going to take this one. I think it's John. It's tough to beat the champ, you know? Yes. <laughs> okay, John. It's a big event today, and you are one of the headliners here. Uh, you and Mayor Pro Tem Bradley will be having a pie eating contest. So uh, tell me how you've been training for this. Wow, so uh, this morning I, I got a chance to watch Joey Chestnut pound down 76 hot dogs. And I was thinking to myself, wow, my, my uh, really strict uh, training program since the last 4th of July, I've probably had three pieces of pie over the last 12 months. And I eat those very slowly and enjoyed the pie. But I think here's the secret, don't eat breakfast. Keep the hunger a little bit, and don't pick the wrong type of pie, but he's right there. I'm not gonna say it too loud. I'm hoping he picks like an apple crumble, and I can have a lemon meringue, which just goes in really quickly, so. You are the champ. Uh, I am, and uh, that's why the, the Mayor Pro Tem is always uh, in a bitter mood. Um, it's sad for him, really but not too much. He's already conceded and he says that, you know, he's just too afraid and he's not gonna step up today? Is that what he said? He's actually been training for this event now. How have you been training? I was born for this event. No training required. I, I, I do have uh, a little extra from the, uh, the lockdown, uh, but that has been my only training. What did you learn the most about the last pie eating contest that's gonna make you victorious today? The last pie eating contest, I had a little bit of an issue when I put my face into the whipped cream for the first time. I inhaled, and I inhaled whipped cream. That was a, a, a pro tip. Don't do that. Well, as you know, 4th of July wouldn't be 4th of July without the pie eating contest. And this year, Mayor Pro Tem Bradley versus Councilman Crookshank, who is the defending champion. But this year, it's more than bragging rights. It's also the belt. Okay. Those pieces over there. Shout out to a couple of people here that uh, have really stepped forward. Corey right there, he's uh, sporting the new world championship pie eating contest belt. Corey and Andrew and Daniel, uh, our department heads, great job on putting this together guys. And then everybody else, I've seen uh, Ricky and Quentin and Perry and uh, all kinds of people. Oh, that's right. I don't know a lot of the names, but I saw them all. Okay, there's there's not a lot of rules to this. <laughs> Try and do it without getting the, the floor dirty, okay? We don't care about you guys, but all right. Five, four, three, two, one, go! go. They're off and running, ladies and gentlemen. Around the first turn, they're up, off their seats. They are really making a mess of their faces. They are really serious. Face down in the chocolate cream pie. Kirkshank, the winner. Running away winner. Winner. Okay, good hand to both these guys for being good sports coming out here and messing up their faces, okay? <laughs> come on up here. And yeah. Alex, come on over here. Are you, you're going to be my first person in line even though you're not five. Since uh, Dave is such a great competitor, I'm going to let my secret out there a little bit. So like he said, the crust is hard to get off that plate. And so the reality is you got to angle it so the crust is ready to just go right in your mouth. That's the first thing you hit, and then your tongue and everything just pull that crust in, and you're away you go. That's the, that's the secret. What do you think about the belt? Oh, man. I mean, look at this thing. This is beautiful. 12 months of wearing this thing to council meetings. That's crazy. And I'm going to be lifting it up so the guy a couple seats over from me can see this thing. That'll motivate him every meeting. <laughs> All right, it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to be an ongoing competition.
competition here. What do you think, Councilman, Mar Mayor Pro Tem? Well, I think I was soundly beaten by a great competitor. Obviously, he had the technique, I did not. Um, and I just want to uh, congratulate uh, Thanks, John. Thank you. Great job. Round three next year. Oh, absolutely. And if he's mayor next year, then it'll be a real mayor's. It will be, yes. Maybe we'll get a third person in from the council. Okay. What do you think? Absolutely. Okay, let's work with Okay. do it for today's show. Thank you so much for being with us and happy 4th of July. We hope you enjoyed all the festivities and as you can see, you can see what I'll be enjoying very soon. I'm Maria Soraya and we'll see you next time.